I'm Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. I'm experimenting with something new here. I got a new dye called Twilight yesterday. And I over dyed some green with it, with the Twilight, and it looked gorgeous. So now I want to see what it looks like dyed on white yarn. But there's going to be a twist to this. I'm dying this to be a specific project, specifically a scarf on my 10 inch rigid heddle loom. And it's specific to that loom and that project because I'm going to be trying to dye the yarn so I can weave hound's tooth with the one shuttle. So this is the warp, the dark warp, I'll wind the light warp later, and this is the weft. Which I've tied and plasticked so that half of the weft will be um, dyed and half will be left white. I measured carefully on my warping board so hopefully what I have here is two passes on my that length is two passes on the 10 inch rigid heddle. This is exciting! See what happens. The yarn is looking like a dark denim. This here is a three yard warp. It looks like a mess, but it's got some choke ties on it. It's a three yard warp done on the warping board. Um, I'll do another three yard warp in white and then warp up the rigid heddle, too white, too dark, too white, too dark, all the way across. This I carefully measured out. I measured a skein. I did four passes on the rigid heddle, pulled up, marked the yarn, pulled it out, and then I wound a skein that size so that once around is two passes of white and two passes of dark. I bound it tightly at the halfway point so we have half in the dye pot and half out. I wrapped the white in plastic because I'm, a, I'm messy. Don't want to accidentally drop it in or splatter it so it'll stay nice and white. And I'm dyeing them both in the same pot. So the idea is I can weave the houndstooth pattern with one shuttle. This will be wound on the shuttle and it'll be two and two as I weave. That's the idea. To see if it works in practice is a whole nother thing. So this is 100% wool. I actually made this a touch larger than four passes just because I'm sure the wool will shrink in the dyeing and the washing process at the end. So I think it'll be slightly smaller. We'll see. So it started to boil. I turned it down a bit. You can see the the color is exhausting. Leaving the water and entering the yarn. I'm excited to see if this project will work. And after another two hours uh, with the temperature turned off, the water is clear 
and all the color is in the yarn except for this part that's still white. So that's great. This is half dark and half white, hopefully in the correct proportions. So here's the finished dyed skein that I'm going to be using for weft. I love that color. I think it's my new favorite dye color. It looks a little different on the screen than it does in real life. This looks like a very reddish blue. What I'm seeing with my eyes is a one that leans more towards a teal. There's a bit longer of a white section than blue section, I think. But I'm not going to I'm not going to get too worried about that because I still have to do my test weave. So uh, once I weave it, I'll be able to know for sure whether I measured correctly and did it correctly. Yeah, also I'm not sure if I dyed enough. I weighed it for some reason after dyeing. Not sure if that's enough yarn for weft. So the whole thing is one big test. So. We'll see. So I have my two warp chains, a light and a dark, and my weft skein, all washed and dried. So now I'm threading onto my heddle, my reed, and I'm going to thread all the white first, and then I'm going to go and thread all the dark after that. See, I have trouble talking and, and doing at the same time. They say that uh, you use two different sides of your brain for uh, the speaking and the visual art. And I'm very visual and my brain switches entirely so that I lose words when when I'm doing my art especially when I'm painting everything goes wrong there um, okay so two every two and two with all the white first then I'll go back and I'll thread the uh, the dark warp chain Unfortunately, my reluctance to do all the calculations may have made me make the weft the wrong size, but not enough weft for the project. But we'll see what happens, and I'll correct it next time and maybe get out the calculator too. Okay, everything's tied onto the back beam, and I'm just rolling on right now. So... We have what looks like houndstooth with one shuttle weaving. There's the part where the color transitions. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's just going to get worse or better or if it's going to stay that way. I can live with that. Yeah, fun. Much easier than switching shuttles on either end. So let's keep going with this and we'll see how it is. Okay, something really neat has happened. Uh, because I didn't have it measured out exactly right, the white length is slightly longer than the blue, I believe. Yes. So what happens when I weave it is the white overlaps itself too much. And for a little 
pieces, little half inch sections, uh, there are three whites instead of two because houndstooth is two blue, two white, two blue, two white. Um, we're getting little areas where there's three whites, but they're they're coming up um, in a um, in an order that's consistent. So what's happening is I'm getting um, a vague line, which is going back and forth and zigzagging and it's very hard to see but um, so you're getting an overall houndstooth and then you're getting this vague zigzag um, through it which <laughs> I don't mind at all actually it kind of gives a whole nother dimension to it from this angle you can kind of see it so like this across there's a little zigzag, and then it'll start moving across this way to back again. So that's kind of cool. In person, you can hardly see it. A little better on this screen, but I'm going to go with it. Let's get this uh, woven off and, and see what it looks like, the whole thing all together. So here's the finished scarf, completely woven and wet finished. The fringes are knotted, and you can see the interesting pattern within the pattern. Just as I suspected, I ran out of weft, so the scarf is a little bit on the short side. So here's finished scarf. It's a little on the short side, as I expected, but overall, this is an, a success, I would say. Um, even the slightly offset dye of dyeing of the weft has turned out to create this really interesting pattern. Overall, we still have um, houndstooth happening. So I'm really happy and this is not going to be the last one. I'm going to keep honing this technique, creating um, in many different colors, both the, the light and the dark, maybe uh, some variegation in the light and in the dark. Um, we'll see what I can come up with in the dye pot. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This scarf and others are available in my online store. You can find the link in the description below or visit carryfell.com. Thank you for watching.